Hello, Vinci. Hi, Ed, it's Riley here. How are you? Good, how are you going? Well, thank you. I'm, I'm here with Emily and Shung. If now still suits... Oh, hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> if now still suits, can we ask you a couple of questions? Yeah, sure. I hope I can give you a few of I have no doubt we'll be able to get something wonderful from this. Okay. So, in terms of people who have no kind of uh, interaction with data journalism, what is yep. data? Sorry, say that again. What is data at the most um, what basic level? In terms of journalism or in terms of general? In terms of journalism. Oh, okay, um, so. Okay, uh, and sorry, just I'll go back a step so I can just sort of modify my answers. So you're you're writing up an article on this, yeah? I think. That's correct. So, yep. So sorry. Yes, we we are writing an article for um, our media class, um, which Diane is our tutor for, um, and it will be published on the UNSW kind of course. It's not really a website because it's a closed, kind of closed blog. Yeah. Okay. So, um, uh, and are you recording, or are you going to just jot down what I say? We're going to do both if it suits you. Can we record as well? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. okay. We'll send through just, a... Um, okay, you ready? Yep. Okay. So, um, in relation to journalism, I think everything, every bit of information you collect and then write or publish um, is a form of data. So, an interview is an unstructured data all the way through to a spreadsheet, which is structured data or a database you go and explore and get some information out of that structured data. So um, anytime you gather a whole bunch of things together and then publish them in whatever way, um, you're dealing with data. So what kind of separates this structured data journalism from traditional journalism? Okay. Um, so uh, traditional journalism... Um, deals with some structured data, but usually the end results are a summary and aggregate information, um, such as um, unemployment rates. Um, you might go and look at all the data that makes up that you just report on the rate, or um, polling data, you might just report on the actual end results. You don't need to go and look through all the, the other data. Um, and you also deal with interviews, which are unstructured. Um, when you're dealing with structured, um, that's where you're effectively um, if you think of journalism as a process flow, you're going to the beginning of the process flow and going back a bit further. So um, all things being equal, usually you might get a report from someone or get a report linked to you and it's got conclusions based on someone doing a data analysis. Um, part of my job is I go up, I go back a bit and I go and get the original data and I might do my own crunching and then pull my own aggregate data and then report on that. Okay, so what else does a data editor do? Okay, so um, so there's a couple of things. Um, there's all the pre, pre, um, pre, I guess, pre-traditional journalism phases, which is getting data, um, normalizing that data so you can, um, you can crunch it in some way, whether that be from something quite simple, such as an average, to something a bit more complicated, um, or, um, or validating data, so you're sort of doing one of those few things within that process that gets to the point where you have a data set that you've done some analysis of, um, whether that be actual number crunching or visual analysis um, using graphs, etc. So that's one part of it. Um, the other part of it is um, there's a lot of you'll get data that's a bit, um, the phrase they use is dirty, so you have to clean it up so you can, um, so people can do something with it. So you might, um, you might get a table and people have written, um, to give an example, have written one million with an M and then they've written one million at a number. You might need to clean all of that up so someone can do something with that data. So there's a bit of data cleaning, which is sort of throughout the journalism process. But in any case, so the pre-publication stuff is you have the data in some way and you've done something with it and then and then that usually gets you to the beginning of the process where you are then um, doing your normal journalism thing. So what the data should, the data crunching should do is give you tip-offs about what's interesting or unusual about the data. Then you need to go and do all the normal things you would normally do, which is go and interview experts and sources and um, whoever else you need to interview to go and see whether that means something and whether you understand the data or not properly. So one of the extra things you often do is you have to go and talk to the person who gathered the data or looks after it to ask them what the limits of the data are. So every, every data will have its sort of limits. 
and um, you just need to understand that when you're reporting so you don't find something that you think is very exciting, but it just turns out to be um, that particular thing you can't do with the data. So there's all that sort of thing, um, which sort of, so you're getting the data, you're crunching it, um, you're doing your reporting on the data, and then the other part of it is the sort of publishing. So you have all the normal ways of publishing through um, radio or um, you know, writing a story, doing a video, that sort of um, What you can also do is um, publish visualizations of it using different tools and also publish tools where readers can dive into the data. Has data journalism recently, do you think, become more visible for consumers with the things like the Panama Papers and, and WikiLeaks? Is it becoming more of a more of a yeah, buzzword? Yeah, I mean, all, all, all journalism, in its respects, is, um, is data journalism in some way. Uh, but it, it, it's a bit more visible, but what everyone means about it is very different. So when I think about it, I'm thinking more in a broad sort of um, publication view. So I, I'm not... Um, like, I've, I've done some work on the Panama Papers with the reporter involved, but he, he was the one who dived into and made all the links from the data. Um, I helped him out with some other sort of um, visualisations and things like that. So, um, yeah, it's more visible now, definitely. Um, but what it means for everyone is very different. We saw the um, your tweet this morning about the database um, going live. What do you think a circumstance like the Panama Papers and, and the media coverage says about the power of big data in storytelling? Oh, look, the Panama Papers is um, unprecedented, both in its scope and size and the number of journos involved. Um, this sort of collaboration, given the number of documents that are originally there, is only possible when you have um, tools that can make some sense of a massive data store and then that's the beginning, then you give it to investigative reporters who can then look for stuff and then investigate the links because just being in the database doesn't mean you've done anything wrong. Um, offshore accounts are legal. Um, it's proving that this person is actually the same person and they're behind this thing and there's some wrongdoing there in some, in some way so they've hidden it from authorities or they shouldn't have that or that's not, um, that they've, they've, they've done something actually wrong. Um, that's the it gets you the part where you can actually backtrack and find some evidence to prove that otherwise. So um, you wouldn't be able to do that if um, there's a whole bunch of tools um, that they've used to do that um, that I've never quite seen being used on this scale before. So it's unprecedented um, and that's why it's had such an impact because it's a real peek into a world you, um, if someone gave a normal newsroom that, that trove of data, they, they wouldn't be able to do they could do bits and pieces on it, but this is a really comprehensive and ongoing um, mining of that data. And what's being released today is only a fraction. It's just, it's about 200,000 odd, 200, odd names can, um, plus another 100,000 from the earlier release um, and the links between them. Um, so even if you found someone's name on there, that's just the beginning. You might find you know, a rich lister on there, but that doesn't mean they've done something wrong. You've got to go and then you get to the beginning, as I said before, you know, that, that's the tip off and there might be a story that then you've got to do all the normal journalism things, but at least you have some evidence now to start you off. Does that make sense? That, that does make sense. So the tools then are, are really integral to to the storytelling element. So how important is the relationship between the, the programmers, the kind of aggregators um, on the more technical side of things and the more conventional journalism technique? Oh, it's an intuitive thing. Um, the programmers can do things that journos can't. The journos can do things that programmers can't. Um, so my experience has been the programmers can get all of the data and do something and get it get it organised in a way that it can be searched and um, extracted out. But the journo is the one who can then use that tool um, and sort of, depending on how complicated the tool involved is, can either dig out the bits they need themselves or go, can you dig there and get me more detail there? So it's kind of an, it's an iterative thing and you kind of, um, one without the other doesn't really, um, doesn't have the same effectiveness. All right, I think we've got a lot to work with there, Ed. 
Um, we don't want to take up too much of your time. So, so we'll go um, with... Can I ask a favour? Is, um, when you've done this, can you... Um, I, I don't want to check it, but just flick me a copy of whatever you end up to Diane. So Once it's submitted? Yes. So all three of us will be writing separate stories, um, but we can, no, all, we can all send That's you copies of... <laughs> We can all send you copies of what we submit. Yes. We're also going to... I just want to have a look, that's all. I'm not, it's not to test your anything or to, um, to have a go at you. It's just, just... Yeah, for sure. We are also going to send through um, a release form, which is a requirement from um, Diane and the course that we have from all of our subjects that we've spoken to. Oh, sorry, I, I want a blog. No, it's a release form for the actual assignment itself to say that we had oh, your okay, permission yeah. to, to kind of interview you for it. Oh, okay. So oh, you have to email it to me, do you? Yeah. Is that okay? I'll email okay. it through to you later on today. Yeah, and I, and I have to physically sign it. And can I just physically sign it and just scan it back to you or something? Yeah, that's perfectly fine. That works. Okay. And when do you need that by? Um, well, ideally in the next week or so it would be great. Okay. 